It is starting to feel crisp and cool, so I'm going to be sharing with you today a fall episode. I have been so excited to create this, to edit this. I'm hoping to really capture the fall vibes. We're going to decorate my front porch. We're going to decorate the bedroom, add some new pieces, dry flowers, make some pumpkin recipes, and just enjoy fall at the farmhouse. Thank you to Kohl's for sponsoring today's video. More on them in a bit. We put in this faux mantle a few years ago and I've struggled to figure out exactly how to decorate it. One problem is above it, we have our frame TV, which I like because I can swap out the art seasonally, but it makes it a little bit of a challenge to decorate, to layer things in front of it. I decided that I'm just going to do it anyway. And if we want to watch a show, we can pull down whatever is in front of it. That would be worth it to me rather than not having it decorated how I want it. I'm in and out of this room constantly throughout the day and we only watch TV infrequently. So for me, that makes more sense than not enjoying the view. Another reason that I found it a bit challenging is it stands out in a way that isn't exactly good. I wanted it to stand out. I used to have it white. I really liked it after I painted it tan, but then I want to make another color in this room, maybe put up, maybe paint all of the trim the same color as the mantle, paint the rest of the room a color. These are some ideas I'm floating around. I really like wallpaper in this room, but I'm afraid with the texture that's on the wall, it wouldn't stick right. So I have been brainstorming different colors and ideas. I found the clock and the candle holders recently at an antique shop. I've been collecting things thinking about doing a bit of a refresh this fall, and that is what I'm sharing with you today. So just some things that I've been doing and collecting over the last several weeks to transition into fall. I'm really happy with how a lot of it turned out. Do you wanna say thank you to today's video sponsor, Kohl's? The pieces that I picked up for my fall decor are no exception. I love what we've added. My favorite and first thing I'm gonna share with you is this heritage quilt by Sonoma. When I first picked it out on the Kohl's website, I was intending to show the black and white side at the foot of our bed, but then whenever I got it out, I realized how beautiful the color was for fall, but then also I think I'm gonna really like it year round, I'm trying to add a lot more color, pattern throughout our entire house, really wanting to move away from everything being matchy matchy instead to feel layered and collected. So this was the perfect subtle pop of color. The quilt that was here before we've had for so many years it had lots of holes in it, and so it was time to replace it. It's just been washed and dried way too many times. I also picked up this knit blanket from Sonoma and this basket. Whenever it's fall, I like to add spots throughout the house that are cozy, a blanket readily available for chilly nights to curl up next to the wood stove. And then also I like to add a lot of dried florals. I'm going to be making some of my own in today's video, but I also picked up this bouquet from Kohl's and a dried floral wreath for the front door. I love natural elements in my decor. I try to stay away from anything that is very overtly fall. Lots of subtle nods to the season. Dried florals because of course that's how we can preserve florals that we've grown all through the season through the colder months wicker, warm tones, cozy knits, soft lighting, so more on that in a little bit, candles, those are also some of my favorite things. I have been putting off forever, finally getting the basket that I had all my birth supplies in out of our room. Victor is now eight weeks old and I need to put the basket back. So now all I need is some diapers here. So I'm just gonna use this small wicker basket. This blue chunky sweater knit throw pillow adds texture and warmth. It adds color, but still fits into my fall priorities with the knit. I also picked up this pretty gold frame. I like that I could keep this on the dresser, swap out prints for different seasons. So I'm gonna do one that has more of a fall theme and then I can switch it during Christmas, maybe during spring. And then I picked up a pumpkin candle as well to really enhance the cozy vibes in our bedroom. I can really feel that the days are getting shorter. It's become apparent now because we have certain things like activities in the evening where it wasn't dark when we got home and now it is. And then also it's hard to not be dark during milking chores unless we get them done really early. Part of my homemaking routine in the fall and winter is going around the house, turning on lamps, making it really cozy for those long evenings. And I'm anticipating that right now, I'm trying to collect and prepare with things that will make the season ahead less of a bummer because I just love the season. I love 
growing flowers in our garden and pulling in all of these vegetables. I love taking the kids to the pool and it being warm when you go outside, not having to worry about shoes. And that is still the case. It is still that now and I'm still very much enjoying it, but I'm trying to brace myself for that not being the case. I'm looking forward to our first fire in the wood stove, looking forward to the cozy glow of it and then the lamps and the different lighting and candles throughout the house. Another thing that I'm doing to keep some of that summer beauty that I love so much and that I'm going to miss is drying flowers that we've grown. We have a variety of flowers all throughout our property in the landscaping, in the garden. Luke planted some in this little area over our front hill. And I have been really bad about this in years past. We've had these flowers, like these limelight hydrangeas have come up for years and I never did take them in, even though when dried, they can last for a couple of years and still look pretty. So why have I not taken the time to do that in order to enjoy their beauty while I'm waiting for them to come up again? I do not know because it's so darn easy. So I've just collected in small bundles echinacea, hydrangeas, roses, which end up being my absolute favorite dried zinnias. They aren't the prettiest dry, but they're going to die anyway. Herbs, I have basil, I have sage. Sage looks especially nice in arrangements. I'm drying out cosmos as well. They get really tiny and wild looking, but it does still add another element of pretty to an arrangement. The more I have to work with, the more fun it is whenever it's time to play with these flowers, arrange them and make a beautiful bundle. And once these are hung for a couple of weeks and feel nice and crispy, I'm going to make some arrangements that we can keep all through the winter. I get asked a lot about the rack that I'm hanging them on. If you search pulley made clothes drying rack, you will find it. I believe mine actually came from Europe, so it took forever to get here, but I love how it looks in front of my pantry and it's useful as well to dry things from. Like I mentioned earlier that I've been doing a lot of antique shopping lately. The turn of seasons has inspired this. I want new art, I want new lighting. We found the most beautiful painting in a shop nearby for my daughter's room. I also went on Etsy and found a light fixture for the pantry. Now this spot isn't yet wired in, it needs to be to make it more convenient. But in the meantime, I just picked up one of those battery powered LED bulbs. Not the most practical thing, but this spot just needed a light fixture. And sometimes I just wanna get stuff done and get the project out of my brain for a while. So eventually we can have this wired in by an electrician, but for now it was very satisfying to put up a light fixture where I had been wanting one for so long. I saw Liz Marie over on her blog do that. She used this LED bulb and that's what inspired me to try the exact same thing. I wanna do it in some other spots around my house too. These spots where you wanna try out what a light fixture will look like, but then am I really gonna take the time to actually wire this in? Maybe you'll find that you don't really need a light fixture there. I don't know. I feel like that's a good way to visualize it and just try it is hang it, put in one of those LED battery bulbs. The seller actually accidentally sent me the wrong shade. I didn't catch it right away. So I shipped that back. So we no longer have that in our pantry. And very soon the one I actually ordered will be coming. It was just a mistake and I didn't even notice it because I liked that one too. But I, I saw my order and I realized that wasn't exactly what I had ordered. So I'll be showing you a different shade in the pantry. We didn't have to take the uh, gold part down or anything. That that stayed. We just have to swap that out whenever he sends it. Another thing I like to do every single year, it's a yearly ritual. It's a bit of an investment because, you know, pumpkins aren't free, but it brings me so much joy to see my farmhouse front porch decorated for several months. It's just worth it to me to go pick up some pumpkins. The kids really enjoy picking them out. Grab a couple of mums. We got a good deal on those. I don't right away take the green stuff out like the ferns and the kale and some of the herbs that I planted in the planters earlier this season. I planted them, I think, in probably May. I don't take those out because I think the green looks really nice with the mums. At some point, if I forget to water them or whatever, they'll, they'll probably be done. But I have been able to keep them alive all this time. And they look really pretty next to the orange mums, my dried floral wreath, the pumpkins, the cozy blankets, pillows. It doesn't take much time. It doesn't have to be difficult. It can be very simple. But 
Every time I walk out that porch, which is often, of course, I really enjoy seeing the seasonal decor. It just gets me in the fall spirit. After a few weeks, the florals are dried. I added some roses to a dried floral arrangement that we already had from years past. My daughter entered it in the fair this year and got a blue ribbon on our dried floral arrangement. A few extra roses in there brings it up another level and it'll be good next year as well. Here is Victor's crib that he's never slept in. I have this personalized cozy knit blanket that covers up the storage I have in there. So I'm just using that to put swaddle blankets, wraps, all those baby gear things. And they're nicely hidden behind my velvet and block print curtains that I made around the crib. And then that knit blanket. I didn't realize that would be such a good place to put those things, but of course it is. I don't know if it's the turn of seasons or not, maybe just because we'll soon have a break from a lot of gardening work and a lot of summer activities. But I have been thinking more about home decor. For me, this just comes in waves. Maybe it has nothing to do with the season. I have been looking at design books. I have fabric swatches, constantly adding things to my Pinterest boards that I find inspirational, finding myself in antique shops and on Facebook Marketplace more and more. I have so many things that I'm dreaming about doing in our home. Over the years, even as we've been at this farmhouse, it's only been four years, but I feel like I continually am refining my style and thinking it through as I see things in a new way. That makes me want to add color, add wallpaper, add texture. And a lot of those projects are going to be coming up this fall and winter. I have one daughter who loves decor with me and we like to pour over the design books and the magazines. And we are dreaming about what we can do in our entryway with the wood stove. We think a cozy color with the fire would be so pretty. But we have a lot to think about because we want to be mindful of the views. So when you're standing in our kitchen, you look through the dining room and then through the entryway, you can see all the way into our bedroom and into the living room. And I feel like that all has to flow. Cozy layered, collected, but not clashing. It's a challenge. It was so much easier whenever in my old house that wasn't a Victorian house, I was doing a more simple style and a lot of neutrals on neutrals. It's easier to do, but as my love of design has grown, as I've expanded into looking at other styles, I realized this is the one that I love, but it's it's difficult. It looks so effortless in people's homes. I see images on Pinterest and certain bloggers and designers I like and certain books. The spaces look effortless, but once I try recreating that in my own home, I realized just how thoughtful each piece is. Also, how much time it takes to collect. You can't just go to a store, buy everything in one certain section, put it all in your house and be done. It's a process that will be years and decades long, but it's that same process that tells the story of your home over time. One art piece here, one basket there, a light fixture at this shop and a rug at this garage sale. It really only takes shape over lots of years. I'm enjoying the process. All right, we've cozied up the house and the porch a bit. Let's jump into the kitchen and make some of my favorite pumpkin recipes. I'm so happy to have the pumpkin back out. The first thing we're going to make is a sourdough pumpkin cobbler. Now you can do this two different ways. You can do it long fermented style by combining the flour with the coconut oil starter and honey the night before, letting that sit out so that it can get those benefits of long fermentation. So if you struggle with gluten or you're just trying to include sourdough for a healthier diet for your family, you'll want to do that. Today, I am just going to be making it the fast way, which is by using sourdough discard. Either one totally works. So for the recipe, I am going to be doing two cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of sourdough starter. You can do bubbly and active and long fermented, or you can do sourdough discard. So both are options. Sorry if I'm, I hope that doesn't confuse you. A third a cup of melted coconut oil, a quarter cup of honey, teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, a half a teaspoon salt, quarter cup cream, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. So that printable recipe is over on farmhouseonboon.com. You can just search pumpkin cobbler. That is for the cobbler ingredients, the biscuit that goes on top of the pumpkin filling. Now for the pumpkin filling, two cups of pumpkin puree, you can do homemade or store-bought. Right now I have store-bought, but we actually just picked up a pie pumpkin, so now my fridge is stocked with homemade pumpkin puree. Either one totally works. Three eggs, 
half a cup of brown sugar. You can also do coconut sugar, a half a cup of milk, four tablespoons of melted butter or coconut oil, two teaspoons of vanilla, two teaspoons of delicious pumpkin spice, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. The way that this works is you'll want to bake the filling at 350 degrees. You can either use a pie pan, a baking dish, or a cast iron skillet for about 25 minutes, and then roll out the biscuit dough. So if you long fermented it, you can add all the rest of the ingredients other than the coconut oil, honey, sourdough starter, and flour um, to it the next day. And then roll it out, cut it out with a biscuit cutter, press it into the baked pumpkin mixture, and then bake it for an additional 20 minutes at 350 degrees to cook the biscuit toppings. I also I also used some of my fall themed pie uh, cutters to add some leaves to mine. So that was just a fun touch to put on top of all that. Now this is significantly better with homemade vanilla ice cream. We put ricotta cheese, like we've been doing a ton lately, into our ice cream. So it's a mixture of cream, milk, vanilla, sugar, ricotta cheese. It makes it so much creamier than any other homemade ice cream we've ever tried before. That has seemed to really be the move to help that. You can also add some eggs. That helps as well. The next thing we're gonna make is pumpkin shaped bread. This has some pumpkin flavor in it as well but it's the shape that makes it so beautiful for fall. For this recipe, combine 475 grams of all-purpose flour, 100 grams of bubbly and active sourdough starter, 200 grams water, 100 grams of pumpkin puree, homemade or store-bought, 10 grams of salt and 10 grams of sugar, and one teaspoon of pumpkin spice in a bowl. Just like with any sourdough bread, we're gonna follow the exact same process. So we're gonna let the ingredients sit for a while in order for the flour and the grains to soak up all of the water and then start a series of stretch and folds. I usually try to do about six, but you can get away with three. You basically want every 20 minutes or so to stretch and fold the dough to really develop that gluten. In between, cover it with beeswax wrap or a wet tea towel, foil or plastic wrap. This is just to prevent the air from getting in and drying it out. It is already a less hydrated dough than some of the normal sourdough bowls or my no knead recipe. You don't want it to dry out during the stretch and fold and the bulk ferment process. So after all of the stretch and folds, allow it to bulk ferment until it's doubled. This is depending on how warm your house is. I set it in my warming station, which is in between the burners on my stove. There's a standing pilot, so it's nice and warm. I will just get this going a lot of times early afternoon and then before bed is when I shape it and put it in the fridge. So once it's done the bulk ferment, shape it, put it in a banditon basket, cover it with plastic and put it in the fridge. If you need more tips 
on how to shape bread. I have tons of videos here on YouTube. You can just search for my no need artisan loaf. That's where I show you. This is the pumpkin one, but it's the same concept. So after it has sat in the fridge overnight, the next day I pop it out on some parchment and this is where I create the pumpkin shape. All I have on hand is jute twine. It's better if you have that white food twine or yarn or whatever you want to call it because some of the little hairs do actually stick to the bread. I forgot that and didn't source any before making this video, but we just went ahead and enjoyed it anyways. <laughs> but do know that if you put this jute twine around it during baking, the oven expansion will happen through the string and then some of the little fibers will stick to it. So I take four strings and create eight equal sections on the bottom, so on the seam side. So I, I wrap it underneath the top in order to make that pumpkin shape. And then just like with any sourdough bread, cook it at a high temperature. I do 450 degrees, I believe. I need to look at the blog post, but it's over on the blog if you search pumpkin bread with the lid on for about 20 minutes and then with the lid off for tw about 20 minutes. So that oven expansion happens when the lid is on and then browning happens when it is off. You really want that steam so that it puffs up and goes through the strings and creates that beautiful pumpkin shape. I went ahead and topped mine with a cinnamon stick. After I looked at the cinnamon stick for a bit, I realized that I should add some sage leaves to add those pumpkin leaves. It looks so pretty. We didn't cut into it for about two days because we just wanted to look at it and then ultimately we ate that bread. Um, it tastes great toasted with some butter as a side dish. It's a beautiful way to enjoy the season. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this fall homemaking fall decorating video. I really enjoyed making it and this is going to kick off all things fall. I'm going to be creating so much fall content. So make sure if you aren't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching and for stopping by our farmhouse.